when you're aware of your body position, you can never unknow that. It's knowledge. It's knowledge of your body. It's very similar to learning how to play soccer or hit a golf ball or play a piano. You're always going to have that skill. You're always going to be able to prove it. There's a time period it takes to fix your body. There's a commitment that it takes, but it works every time. Welcome to the Dr. Axe Show. I'm Dr. Axe. Today we have Dr. Mike Wasselin and Andrew Didelek. Did I say that right? Neither Perfect. of them you got right. All right, <laughs> my bad. All right, well, hey, I'll correct it in a minute. Um, I love these guys. I got turned on to them by Doc Jen Fit, Jen Esquire, following her on Instagram. And I saw her do a post about them doing functional movements. And I was, uh, man, I, I was really excited because I come from a background of when I, at least when I was in high school sports and when I, I did triathlon and some club soccer in college and everything I was taught was wrong, <laughs> almost every movement. And so when I got trained myself, I started learning about functional movements. My wife is a CSCS trainer and an expert in functional movement. She's a yoga instructor. And I, you know, I go in the gym regularly. I see people doing so much wrong. And then I see you guys who have an incredible Instagram page. You guys are I really think, and I'm not saying this just because you're on my show, I haven't seen anybody educate better than you guys do in functional movements, especially on social media. You guys do such a fantastic job. Jen does a great job as well. But you know, there's so many people out there with chronic injuries from everything from shoulder pain, uh, herniated discs in their low back, neck pain, plantar fasciitis, you know, old ACL tears, and they're, you know, and now they're They've got terrible knee pain at 30 years old. All of these, so many people are struggling with these injuries. And you guys are teaching people how to rehab and heal and get stronger doing movements in the correct way. And unfortunately, most people haven't been taught the right way. But I just want to say, I'm a huge fan of what you guys are doing. And before we dive in, we'd love to hear a little bit about of, of the story about how you two met. Because Dr. Mike, I know that your background is chiropractic. Uh, Andrew, I don't know a lot about your background except for your ripped. I do know that <laughs> in most of the videos on Instagram, your, your, your shirt's off, but you guys are, um, you, you, you guys are doing a great job. We'd love to hear, Hey, how'd you meet and how did you get into functional movements and this sort of, uh, rehabilitation? Yeah. And, do and, and Dr. Axe, before we even do that, just, um, you talk about all these different injuries and many people believe that their diagnosis, they're special with their diagnosis because there's thousands, hundreds of diagnoses, whether plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis or cuboid tunnel or <laughs> or 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 uh, subluxation of the cuneiform. I mean, all these weird pat patellar malpositioning. And the truth is, these are all leaves on a tree. They're yeah. like they're the leaves on the tree. And most injuries are very very simple. Most most every diagnosis is simply the result. It's not the cause. And healthcare simply addresses the leaves on the tree or the or the diagnosis or the symptom. Mm. And most of the times, we've discovered after working with you know, tens of thousands of people is that by helping people slowly and methodically regain control of their body, they learn to strengthen their body into alignment piece by piece. It's very simple. It's very simple movements. And the people regain control of their bodies, their health and their diagnosis just, um, just takes a back seat. And then they yeah. start being regaining control of their life and start hitting goals and, and rehashing on dreams that they once had. And it's very simple and anyone can do it. It's not magic. So I just want to start off with that and saying that most injuries are very, they're very simple, very simple. Cause you know, I graduated high school with a 1.9 GPA doc. I can't, you can't, or if you try to make things complex with me, I don't do a good job of that. Uh, we, I like these very simple, but back to our story as well is, you know, I went to school to, at Palmer chiropractic college. I got a pre-med, um, pre-med minor and a degree in psychology from Kent State University in Ohio. Oh, yeah. And um, I was one of the colleges that let no, me no, in. Are you, are, you, are you from Ohio? I'm from Pittsburgh. Okay, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. So oh, you're Dayton? I, I'm okay, real God. familiar with Kent State, so. Sure. Yeah. So we end up, uh, I got those degrees. I worked with uh, in chiropractic up until uh, from 2000 to 2006. So I started working, I started a rehab branch in a clinic when I was 19 years old. I was taking x-rays of people, just blasting radiation through them. I hope they're still okay to this day. A lot of mistakes were made, but I've learned from there. <laughs> so we, um, I went to chiropractic school and I didn't really, I, I believe the philosophy that the body could naturally is, is, is the body is designed to heal. The body is designed to be resilient, to heal when, and the tool that they 
taught us the adjustment. From my experience, only one out of maybe 150 adjustments would actually pr produce a remarkable response. And it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to build a profession around for myself. And so I, I got connected in school with Titleist Performance Institute and SFMA and FMS and CSCS and <coughs> ART and Graston and Kinesio Tape and all of these functional movement rehab. And I really resonated with that. Had an opportunity to move to California. And I started building a, building a practice out here and I uh, started working with Titleist Performance Institute, a big influencer, Dr. Greg Rose. And at the I, I knew, though, I knew, though, Doc, that, that and I was still practicing all the stuff they taught me in school, all these adjustments and subluxations, and it just eh, it wasn't resonating, uh, mostly because I didn't believe I needed adjusted. I be I believe I had control over my body. Like I would injure my knee, I've torn my meniscus, I've torn my labrum, I've had impingement, I've had plantar fasciitis, I've had all this. And I simply knew how to position my body in a way that took pressure off those areas. And so, but I was unable to, to properly teach people how to do that in the clinic just because it's so confusing. You got insurance visits, you got long commutes to the office, there's, there was so many complexities associated with being in healthcare that were frustrating me because I was unable to deliver this to people. I just always believed if I could just teach people everything I knew, they would be fine. They would have control. I didn't know that at the time, though. So I found myself about eight years building the practice, kind of only a mediocre one, but I had a great opportunity in 2013, and it was to teach a pre-physical therapy class at California State University. So the dean of kinesiology was, was a patient of mine. And she goes, do you want to teach a class? So I decided to start a, uh, a class called Intro to Manual Therapy Techniques because I wanted to give students a real world example of what a day in the life of a physical therapist or chiro is actually like, not just what they say in school. Because you and I both know that it's when you're out there, it's different. You're, yeah. Yeah, it's oh, a yeah. lot different. And I don't believe a lot of people would choose that degree if they were to know what it was actually, what it is like. And so I started that class and Andrew was one of my first students. And so he was a student and then he was a teacher's assistant of mine. I had about seven teacher's assistants, which oh is funny because everyone else just had one, but I had about seven. So it was, I, had, I had a nice operation going. So now Andrew, Andrew was a patient? So I was a student of his in that oh. class. Okay, good, I interned, got it. yeah, I was a teacher's assistant with him. I interned with him and then I started working with him. Okay, got it. Yep. And then he started after he was, uh, after his internship, he started, um, he actually herniated a disc in his low back. Big one. About a 10 millimeter herniation. Wow. Yeah, my L405, um, three surgeons told me I needed to have surgery and I knew that I didn't want to go that route because my uncle had gone through six and he was still in just chronic, chronic pain. Never wow. did they look at the root cause of the issue. And I'm like, there's something else going on here. And at the time, I didn't fully understand it because I went through a kinesiology degree and they didn't necessarily teach you movements. They just they teach you anatomy and biomechanics and physics. And it's like, that's great and all, but it can be much more simplified to just understand the movement. So I spent about two years exploring my movements, taking a lot of medications. There's a lot of periods of time that I don't necessarily remember my life. And I was also working on patients in the office while I was on medication. I'd be hobbling around with, you know, oh. trying to work on people with the same injuries. And it's probably one of the best experiences that I've ever had is going through that process and overcoming it. Without it, I don't, I don't know, you know, where move you would be at this point, but it really forced me to dive into movement and really change my, my body. Like the, the, the jackness was me putting in a ton of work and, and really exploring every single little movement, whether or not I can, you know, move my shoulder blades around all crazy. Um, for those of you that are watching this, that, that's good for you to see. Everyone can do that by the way. And that, that really helps to eliminate shoulder impingement and create stability through the spine and the torso, all these little things. And um, that, was, that was one of the biggest things for me and, and learning to teach that to the clients in the office. And, you know, I was even working with Mike, teaching him how to do some stuff. He, he conversely taught me how to do tons of stuff with people. He didn't, can I say this, Mike? I was working like, on people, adjusting people. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can say it. There's a statute of limitations. I'm sure yeah. we're close. I was. I mean, I was You're working fine. on everybody. 
hands <laughs> on, adjusting, doing doing everything that I should not have been doing, and it was an incredible learning experience. Yeah, and, yeah. and Doc, at the time, I still had part of me still believed that I was this magic healer, and that I could. I, my goal was to help people get out of pain as fast as possible. So I would still look at their X-rays and MRIs and still do tissue work and adjust them. And then Andrew would then help them recover. What I learned though- It would be like three that, visits, you'll be good to go. Right. And there was a moment of time <laughs> where I learned that Andrew's methodical approach on his own body is the path to the top of the mountain. It's the most consistent path. And the pain is an amazing motivator. And so to adjust somebody, and, and even if their pain went away, their life tended to get right back to where when pain moves down the priority list, people tend to resume what they were doing without any concern of fixing their body. With what we've created is we, we, also, we also help people embrace pain and learn from pain because pain is truth, pain is real, pain is a sign that there's an imbalance in the body, period. And the quote, know thyself applies to your body because nobody can truly tell you what's wrong with you. And if they can, because of the subtleties that exist within everybody and the subtleties that are required to fix your body, it is a self-exploration. It is, it always will be, it has to be. It's how we succeed and learn and grow in life and it's no different with the body. Yeah, I, I think you guys said some really important things. I want to touch on a few. I, I do want to mention for anyone listening, I, um, and again, this is, I don't believe this is necessarily going against what you said, or it might be. Uh, you know, I, I think for people, what, what, just saying with the chiropractic adjustment, I think there's some big benefits there if we're talking totally. about, you know, a lot of times, you know, people can have uh, obviously areas that become immobile and they need, need movement. When you yes. get movement there, more, you know, spinal fluid and blood get there and you get healed. But, but, but one of the big things you guys are hitting on, which I think is so critical, is, is that what caused that poor posture in the fir first place? What's causing you to a muscle to not fire and another muscle to overfire? What's causing you to have rounding of your spine? What's causing you to have, uh, you know, a loss of curve in your low back and uh, not have your glutes fired at all? What, what's, what's causing this? And if you're not fixing those glutes not firing, if you're not fixing those shoulder blades not being back or the pecs taking over for everything, you're going to continue to, as chiropractors say, be subluxated, be out. So if we're getting the root of the problem as you're talking about, you have to fix your movements and you have to retrain. And it's not, it doesn't take one visit to retrain movement patterns that we have ingrained in our body over 10, 30, or 80 years with some people. So c carry on. But I, I love what you guys are saying. Right. And the, the perfect example out there that exists right now that people might be aware of is Tiger Woods. He's had three or four low back surgeries. Yep. And this is ever so common and so painful for me to see when it's so incredibly preventable is that the herniation is caused it's caused from a lack of awareness to an area it's caused from the body being out of it now there is 100 percent other components is that what we've learned we joke because we say we're move you in five years we think we're gonna be called thank you because the power of the mind yeah but relating to the body a disc herniation there's an imbalance that occurs and likely and likely with a disc herniation, it's the body finds itself in a flexed position, which causes a disc to bulge out the back. Yep. And the surgery simply trims off the damaged disc. And the problem is though, you've got five discs in the low back. And that even that same disc, that pressure is still there. It still exists. So Tiger Woods, one surgery, two surgeries, three surgeries. And his third, I think he's got rods and bolts in his back. And it's, it's so predictable. I believe the number from World Health Organization, it's something like 60, 50 or 60% of people, don't quote me on this, that have a disc herniation surgery, have another one. It's yeah, because it's they're trimming off the symptoms. It's so high and it's so predictable and it's, and it's, it's, it's nearly 100% preventable as well, these surgeries. And so we're on a mission to help empower people to fix their bodies, to own their bodies, to own their pain to learn where their pain is coming from, to learn it and to fix it once and for all. Because you can't, because when you're aware, when you're aware of your body position, you can never unknow that. It's knowledge, it's knowledge of your body. It's very similar to learning how to play soccer or hit a golf ball or play a piano. You're always gonna have that skill. You're always gonna be able to improve it. 
There's a time period it takes to fix your body. There's a commitment that it takes, but it works every time. And so we're on a mission to help at least make it entertaining, make it as simple as possible for people to learn. Love it. Well, one of the things I'd love to do on the show, because I know there are so many, so many people struggling with a number of issues. I want to go over some of the most common issues and let's talk about, hey, where's the dysfunction happening? And then what, what are the right movement patterns, exercises, things that people need to start doing to retrain their body? Let's start off with probably the biggest one, what we talked about, low back pain disc herniations, issues, especially L5, S1, L4, L5. How does somebody, what causes the, the dysfunction and how does somebody start to heal the disc? And Andrew, I know that's something you dealt with personally, uh, you were saying, how, how, how do we heal that? Well, I'll let, Andrew, I'll let Andrew explain this. Andrew's surpassed my knowledge with movement. What, what I want to start off by saying is that we're fortunate enough to have, to have worked with tens of thousands of people, to seen the people a cohort of people improve and to study that high, that percentage, those people who have truly fixed their bodies, who, who are empowered, who are living life. And we're, we work, we've worked with them for years and years and years. We track them. And so if Andrew, if you want to dive in about low back pain and some movements and some causes and movements that can help people. Sure. I mean, I'd really like to get into the fact that we, we don't, isolate a part of the body we actually we include the entire body as a whole so regardless of, of the injury we we put people through similar movements there are variations from person to person depending on what they're going through but for the most part the framework that people go through is the same whether they have a shoulder impingement hip impingement they've got plantar fasciitis or a herniated disc so we have people focus on six checkpoints of the body we'll start with the, the, the pelvis being able to find a neutral pelvic position in whatever movement that you're doing, whether you're sitting, standing, running, lifting, and then being able to activate the glutes in that position to help turn out the knees and stabilize the pelvis. Being able to actually spread the toes apart, grip the feet, use the arches of your feet that people claim to be flat and lengthened and that they need arch supports for. We have people strip their shoes off understand that the muscles in their feet can be used to actually lift the arch that will that can actually help align the pelvis when you learn how to use your feet your back pain can improve improve significantly when you get rid of that heel lift in your shoe all the cushion and you start to use your muscles in your brain to connect to the feet that'll in turn carry up the chain all the way up to your shoulders and head wow. so from there we got we got the pelvic position being able to find your neutral pelvis whether you're too arched too flat and being able to find that, that halfway point in between, being able to engage the glutes in everything that you do, being able to turn the legs out, create stability in the pelvis and the knee, and then also being able to grip the arches of the feet, the toes, create stability there to build stability up to the pelvis. From there, you've obviously got the core positioning, being able to actually engage all of the core, not just the abdominals, but you got the transverse abdominals, the, the obliques, the QLs. I can even include the lats, and the pelvic floor, and the pelvis, diaphragm, all in there together, learning how to breathe, yeah, breathe into that position, breathe in through the chest and the diaphragm together in all directions, not just one, learning how to create tension in the torso, but not so much tension like you're bearing down. People have a tendency to bear down and that can worsen all, mm. all the issues, herniations, hernias, prolapse. And then from there, being able to actually pull the rib cage in, relax the ribs down into the body. People have a tendency to let the, the ribs flare open. Their chest is sticking up. So every time they're, they're reaching up overhead, their, their back will arch, their ribs will stick out and they've got all this tension in the lower back. The fifth checkpoint would be able to, to rotate the shoulder blades, not, not down and back. People always talk about pulling the shoulders down and back, but what happens when you pull the shoulders down and back? If you pull your shoulders back right now, your ribs start to flare, you start to arch your back. So we actually teach people how to scoop the shoulder blades. So the blade goes down and actually scoops around the rib cage and it creates a lot of stability. There's a protraction around the rib cage. So the serratus and the rhomboids. Wow. It's, it's, an, it's an amazing move. I've had shoulder impingement in both shoulders for about a year. And then the last one, head positioning, being able to reach the head. Learning how to apply those six checkpoints everything that you do from the time you wake up till the time you go to bed it's not like an exercise thing that we teach people yes there are exercises but learning how to be aware of your body is going to make the most profound impact on your 
back. Because it's everything you're doing throughout the day that could be contributing to the issue. I love what you guys are teaching here because it's it's so holistic. You know, it, again, I, I look at this in terms of what I do so much, and it's looking at medicine and nutrition. But you know, today, so much of our medical system is, hey, you got a thyroid problem? Let me give you a medication to suppress or yeah. change your thyroid. Versus most thyroid conditions are caused by gut and adrenal issues, and you don't address it. You, you're not. A, so, anyways, all that being said, I. I, I love the uh, the philosophy and the uh, the approach. And Dr. Josh, as we as, as I mentioned earlier, regardless of the condition, the the process is the same. If so, like if you even say plantar fasciitis right now, people go, "I have that." Well, plantar fasciitis often is caused because the weakness of the foot muscles cause tension on the fascia because the muscles are designed. To, to be active when we walk, when we run, when we hike, those muscles of the feet are like a bicep. You have this, literally the same muscles in your hand as in your feet. And if those muscles of your feet become flaccid, mm. the, the feet now can roll in and collapse. It stretches the fascia of the foot. And now it's like pulling a little baby tree out of the ground. That root, it starts to come up. And that root where, the, where that fascia dives into the bone, that is where the inflammation is caused because the muscles mm -hmm. aren't doing their job, but you have the same muscles. So you just have to connect the brain to them. So regardless of the plantar fasciitis, meniscus, patellar tracking, hip impingement, low back pain, when people learn piece by piece, what Andrew just said, which is doable for everybody in a relatively short amount of time, piece by piece, all of those symptoms decrease, if not completely vanish. So, so, so the first point here for everyone to remember is it, it's awareness. It's body it awareness. Is awareness. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. That's the uh, result. That's what people want, but they're not searching for. They think yeah. they want back pain relief. What they really need is body awareness. Mm, and good. it gets really fun for a lot of people when they start to explore each of these movements and they, they learn the range of motion of every joint in their body. Like, oh, wow, I have all these limitations in these areas. Now I'm going to work on improving them and they're paying attention to them in everything that they, they, they do. They're like sitting at work. They're, they're like, well, wait a minute. Let's change the work position just a little bit. And that's already showing some improvement in the area. Yeah, that's great. You know, one other thing though, as we're getting, we're talking, we're talking about awareness. Talk to me about the importance of uh, not only strength, but because we know strength is important, but also stability and mobility and some of these other things that go along with proper function well what we've seen is is there's a tendency that people believe that if they had more flexibility their pain would go away mm. andrew and i are polar opposites i'm extremely tight i have limited flexibility i have no pain yeah. andrew has a quote tissue disorder he's hypermobile he has all the flexibility he's had every injury out there including a massive herniation so it's what we've discovered um, is that when people learn to control the motion that they already have, they see almost instant results, or at least in a very short amount of time. They learn to control the movement within the range that they already have and control that movement through a range with their muscles. They experience great results. And then from that position, from there then they can choose to work on strength then they can then they can choose mm. to work on mobility so the order because a lot of people are like, i need more flexibility but you hear people say but they don't do anything about it why because it's a chore what am i going to do how do i measure that and, and i think often because people aren't 100 percent convinced that if they have more flexibility they'd feel less pain because if they were convinced they would do it yeah you know i actually and andrew just just uh um well, sharing this with both of you. So years ago, Chelsea and I did CrossFit, which, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and I, I'm fairly knowledgeable, but it's just so hard when you're competitive. It's yeah. so hard. And so I'm doing clean and I'm not built like that. Like I grew up like being a swimmer and a soccer player, but I'm built like more like a swimmer. Like I'm a very lean body Endurance, type. And I'm, yep. I'm not made to do Olympic lifting. But anyways, all that being <laughs> said, I'm doing cleans and I, I literally, I heard them, I felt them and I had a couple bulges there in my low back. And, um, and I'll tell you, I found when I did mobility work, I got so much worse, so mm. much worse. And I started doing something. You probably know this guy. I think his name's Eric Goodman. Uh, he does um, foundation training. Have you guys heard of that at all? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So like I started doing some of that. I mean, that, that really helped, you know, and um, that's right. That's right. The, uh, he the founder. The founder. 
That's right. So I, I thought that stuff was really good. And then I started following you guys and started seeing some improvements too. But all that, all that being said, um, anyways, it's just, uh, I, I know that you guys see a lot of people with a lot of different injuries and different, different levels of injuries. Well, what, what do you do for the person that, and, and Mike, I imagine coming into to your clinic or maybe both of you, but what do you do if somebody's really injured? You know, somebody just has a torn eight. I mean, do you guys take care of people that they just tore their ACL, they just had their disc herniation. Obviously, sometimes you got to ease people back into things, right? I think Andrew can be, because Andrew's a program developer, we currently are not, we don't see people in person. I have in about three years. He wants to again. I am again, though. I am. I actually am really do it because it keeps me, <laughs> it keeps it fresh, it keeps it exciting, it also helps me. Yeah, so I'm going to start adding that back in there again. But what we've done is, is, and Andrew, I think you can describe the program itself and like the, the process, at least the process in which people, we say variants, there's people like, look, that all sounds good, but I just, I can't even tie my shoes without my back killing me. I can't even get out of, I can't even have sex because of how bad a pain I'm in. Like, yep. where do I start? They feel like they're so rock bottom. Yep. And I think Andrew can explain the process better than yep. anybody. Else. That'd be great. Yeah. So the people, for instance, post ACL, post traumatic injury, if they've gone through the surgery, we have them get clearance for exercise from the doctor and then they're clear to go into the program now for someone that had just gotten a herniation they're like i don't want to do the surgery they hop into our program and they're at 11 out of 10 pain all the time we start them off on the ground with breathing with with simple basic movements and we ask people to be a part of a community so right now our community is on facebook and it's one of the most powerful communities that that i've ever seen um, they, they're, it's incredibly vulnerable and everyone shares every little tidbit about their life and what's going on. So everyone can relate. Let's do this together. And they, they work up the mountain together in that, in that sense. So instead of coming into a clinic and just talking to the doctor and be like, Hey, I'm struggling. Doctor says, Hey, let's do this stuff with you. Now you've actually have a group of people going with you that you can relate with just like Alcoholics Anonymous, any other dr drug rehab situation you have people there to support you. And Dr. Josh, the, this, was, this, was, this was inspired by the CrossFit community because it, with healthcare, you know that there's a, there's a law called HIPAA that protects patients' privacy and also keeps them completely isolated. Yeah. And tr having somebody work out, if CrossFit, if there was no community, there would be no success with CrossFit. And the community driven model doesn't just apply with CrossFit, like Andrew said, like Alcoholics Anonymous. It's when people are put together of a similar and what we've learned and we're absolutely blown away is pain. When someone wakes up and they have pain and it's limiting their day, it doesn't matter what race, what sex, what color, where they're from. Everybody works together. I believe we have 70, 80,000 comments a month from members from over 100 and some countries wow. at this point. Amazing. And it's, it's, it's phenomenal. People are working. Someone, some 60 year old will make a post like, Hey, I did this today. If someone 25, we like, they can do it. I could do it. Yeah. And so now they work together. I love it. But Andrew said, I think the, the, the take home message for everybody who's, who's not in our program is that the general process, if you're in extreme pain is to build yourself up from, from the ground is to start with exercises yeah. that are non weight bearing, meaning you're on your back or you're on your stomach. And then yeah. to progress from there to hands and knees position. And then maybe to one knee down and one foot. Then to a standing position. Then to standing position and going through full ranges. And then adding resistance on top of that. That process that I described could be, it could take some people a whole year to get mm -hmm. through that. I think that people, they, they look at like, okay, what are the basic fundamental movements? And you go to a PT and they'll be like, all right, you're going to do some bridges. You're going to do some bird dogs. You're going to do some press ups. Like, Okay, th these are the things you're going to do for your back. And w I don't consider those to be ground level exercises yet. Let's start them off isolating parts of the body, each joint of the body, before they progress to doing bridges. Because bridges, I found that no one can do a bridge the way that we teach it. Yeah. No one. Not a single person that's gone through the program can do it that way. That's a simple exercise. Yeah. And all, a lot of these people, a lot of the people in our program have gone through everything. They've already seen them before and they were taught not to do them correctly by dozens of different people. And a proper so, bridge, a proper bridge entails gripping the ground with your foot, feet, yeah. feet spinning, 
rotating your thigh outward with your glute. It involves firing your glute, leveling your pelvis, driving up the glute, bracing down, pulling your ribs down into your core, pulling your shoulder blade in position. It's a multi-component movement. How many people do you think are doing the Brett Contreras, uh, you know, pelvic thrust the right way? But yeah, I, 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 no. Brett Contreras, the glute guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'd imagine he's, he's there's some, he's some some great thing. stuff. My point was, it's probably there's probably a lot of people very slack, very, very, very back, but it's yeah, he has some great stuff to get the glutes burning, that's for sure. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I, I do want to touch on a few things. So, and, and by the way, this reminds me, I don't know if you guys have seen this, there's something called DNS, and it, it really is sort of bringing people through infant movements up through as they age. And so, it's what you're talking about, it's exactly what you're talking about. It's a baby starts off on their back. So the first thing, uh, this is a this is a system people have where you work on rolling onto your side. Sure, and then, I'm familiar. And then, get, yeah, and then yeah. getting up using your you know your glute meat and your serratus and it. Anyways, but it's reminding me of that. And there's so much research, and it, that's how you develop the curve in your neck and your low back and crawling and all those types of movements. But I love you go from as you're talking about. I just want to hit on a few points so everybody remembers this. Number one, awareness. This is so key you're aware that you're engaging your feet up to your head, um, starting off on your back and your stomach and then working your way to kneeling and then standing over time. And it takes time. It takes time. Anything worth having or doing takes time. Yeah. It's, it's great advice. I do want to talk on a few conditions and the biggest imbalance. So when you guys take care of somebody who has, and, and again, and if you want to say, you know what, Josh, I don't, uh, we want to stick to our six checkpoints. I totally respect that. But I want to give people an example. Like I used to have the worst IT band syndrome ever. I was a triathlete and I literally could not finish a race hardly before my IT bands were on fire. And I realized eventually I read some article about starting to engage my glute mead and, uh, kind of my, 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 uh, my vastus medialis and some other things. And literally after a couple of weeks, like my T band syndrome went away just because my glutes didn't never fire. And once my glutes started firing, but we'd love to hear from you guys with some of these conditions we're talking about, what are some of the most important exercises? Whether you're on the ground, whether you're kneeling, whether you're standing, what are some of the most important exercises? Because you mentioned, hey, glute bridges, the problem is people don't know how to do them. They need to be supervised. What people listening right now, what are some of the exercises they can start doing? And then I do want you to mention hey, do people go and see you guys as practitioners? Are there other people you recommend? Where, I, I just want to give people guidance. How do people get from point A to point B? Sure. Let's start with, let's start with the movement. Andrew, do you want to um, work your think of a pelvic favorite. tilt? <laughs> yeah, What's I that? Say that? I said I couldn't think of a favorite, but I mean, sure, the pelvic tilt so, is definitely key. Right. So Dr. Josh, as I measured, what I discovered in, in practice when I, when, I, when I saw about 10,000 people, about 4,000 people, I, I measured – their pelvic tilt. And pelvic tilt is, I'll stand up here myself. And what pelvic tilt is, it's the, it's your body's natural ability to tilt your hips forward, rotate them forward, which increases the arch in your back, and to tuck them backwards. It's like a hump motion. So arching your back, full arch in the back, rotating your, yeah, rotating your hips forward, arching the back, that's forward tilt. And backwards tilt is is tucking your hips way under flat back like an old man. And what I discovered was about 70% of people that came to see us were had have excessive forward tilt. Excessive. And now for a man, it's about 10, 12 degrees is neutral. And for a woman, it's about 12 to 14 degrees. And so we've seen so extra arch in the back is the most common. And it's a starting point that we use when we teach seminars. We teach uh, seminars around the country sometimes, we, we usually start people with pelvic tilt first because it is pretty much a, an intermediate point in the body between the head and the feet. And it's a pretty simple movement to learn and it can benefit everybody. So Andrew, you want to give a demo on uh, pelvic tilt? You just did, brother. Oh, I did? Well, let's have him do <laughs> yeah. it. Let's so it. go ahead, whether you're seated or standing, put your hands on the sides of your pelvis. I'm going to try to do this without necessarily showing. Yeah, I'll show it. Hands on the sides of the pelvis so you can feel the front and back of the pelvis, you're kind of making a C shape around, around the pelvis there with your hands. You're going to work on arching the back. So stick your butt back, the J-Lo booty. Stick, stick the butt back. 
using the muscles of your lower back to try to lift and pull your butt up toward your back. Hip flexors are, are firing here. And then from here, tuck the butt under, okay? Pushing the junk forward, I would say. Squeezing your glutes and the lower abdominals to help tuck it under. Try to keep the legs straight though. People have a tendency to bend the knees, overcompensate and over round. So keep your legs straight the whole time. Tuck under. Now go back into that arch position. You can use your hands to help you out a little bit. You can actually forcibly arch the back slightly. You can do this seating, seated as well. And then tuck under into that posterior tilt and just work slowly through those ranges of motion in a range of motion that doesn't hurt. So I just showed a very big range of motion on the video. It could be as small as a couple millimeters and that is perfect for you. That's your starting point. And, and what people tend to do when they do these pelvic tilts is they'll glide. They'll do this with their pelvis. Instead of isolating just the movement of the pelvis, they'll shift their weight forward and back. Which is the reason why nobody does a glute bridge the right way. Yeah, exactly. For, for, for the yeah, most part, your, your torso is moving to your upper torso is moving too much, I'm sure. And that's... Yep. Most people are going to... The way they move their body in any movement is how they move their body in their life. It's not just the movement. So people yeah. that can't, they arch when they bridge, they arch when they stand, they arch when they have sex, they arch whenever they're sitting. It's just a, it's a constant, it's a constant. They sleep arched, it's a constant. Mm. And that pelvic tilt, the reason it's so important, and Andrew, I think maybe the only way is to find the middle position. And I think I cut that off, yes. is yeah, to, you find the middle, you arch as much as you can, tuck as much as you can, arch and find that middle, wherever that is for you. And now that is your neutral position. From that position, the muscles, you're able to engage your glutes. You're mm. able to deactivate your quads. This position allows your muscles, it, it allows the appropriate muscles to fire in balance. And so that's a starting point that helps everybody. And it's relatively simple to do. So that movement right there, what was the question? <laughs> So my, my, my question was bringing people from point A to point B that are listening to this. And so starting yes. with the pelvis makes so much sense. Can we, can we talk about scooping the shoulder blades now? A little oh bit? My. We, we talked about that earlier. Let's let hey, A little let's, shout let's out to in Andrew there. in this one. There may, have, there may have been other people that someone else may have discovered this, but I, I truly, I've never seen it. I believe Andrew made a massive breakthrough with body movement because up until the shoulder scoop, the best, the best cue was to pull your shoulders down and then back. You're right. And Andrew, as far as my knowledge, discovered, created the scoop. And it is single-handedly been one of the most, it, it's single-handedly results in, in some of the most dramatic improvements I've seen wow. on people. Because it turns, it literally turns on, it turns on all the muscles that you need to, to perform any shoulder movements while removing pressure. And Andrew, I think if you want to do a demo, and this is something every one of you, we haven't seen anybody be able to do this properly off the bat. So this is great for everybody. So no matter where you are, do this. If you're, if you're in a car, stick your arm out the window. Just watch out for road signs. <laughs> Andrew, you want to take people through that one? Sure. Uh, I've never, I don't think I've ever done it on video. Let's do this on, in terms of like, oh, through audio. the audio. <laughs> you can do it. And, 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 and by the way, if you guys are just listening right now via podcast, uh, Jump on the Move You Instagram page and you'll find it somewhere. There's lots of it. Or go, go, go back on YouTube or on video here and re-watch this section of the, uh, of the podcast slash video. So go ahead and dive in, Andrew. Perfect. So what we have people start off with is actually just shrugging and pulling the shoulder down, just going up and down a few times and then putting the arm out in front of you and you're going to reach away from you forward and then pull the blade back a few times. Just forward and back. So you've got, you've got up and down, forward and back, just to help loo you know, get, the, get the muscles fired up, get everything loosened up a little bit. So forward and back a few times, and then up and down a few times. From here, go ahead and let's do one at a time. One hand on the ribs to make sure they're not just sticking up. You wanna make sure those ribs kind of stay, stay down. You're going to start by reaching toward the wall. So, Dr. Axe, you're going to be reaching toward the wall, whatever you're reaching toward. I'm going to reach toward the camera here. So, I'm reaching. From here, I'm going to roll the shoulder into a bad posture. There's no, there's no necessarily bad postures here, okay? But 
you want to use the full range of motion. So roll the shoulder forward, and then you're going to roll the shoulder back and down, and then press the armpit forward for you toward the, mm. toward the camera, and I'm going to press toward the wall over there. Now, so is be that a scoop under. And does that start to bring in your serratus? Like, that's part of what I'm feeling. Yeah. yeah you should feel the serratus, the lats, yeah. the pec minor, the yeah. rhomboids, the lower traps. All of those are going to engage to pull the shoulder down and to scoop it around. So you can almost mm -hmm. like the, the bodybuilder kind of lat flare, except we're not going this extreme. It's, it's learning how to, to again, the, the reach is very important for this. So you want to reach away, roll that shoulder forward pull it down and then scoop the armpit forward, trying to press that armpit forward without letting the ribs flare out or rotate the body. And when you learn how to do this mm -hmm. and you, you're able to scoop it and use it for a pulling motion, pull up motion, push, pressing overhead, pushing forward, or if you're wanting to create stability in the torso, which it does a lot of, you're, you're creating tension through the entire upper body, the lats get engaged, that creates a lot of stability all the way down to your pelvis. Hmm. So this scooping is actually helping all of the issues down below as well. Wow. It's not, it's not just the shoulder or just yeah. the neck. And it's yeah, also going to lift as a result, your, your posture will be lifted. You'll feel more confident in your body and you'll be able to, and as Andrew mentioned, a tension is created underneath the blades. And when you counter that with tension in the abdominals, you truly create a rigid torso that's able to withstand the stresses of daily life and any impacts or, or, or jarring movements that can occur with lifting or falling off a curb. You become durable. Mm. Yeah. And I can see this as you're saying a whole body movement when you're, when you're getting the lats engaged too and everything else, I mean, it's pretty, obviously it's going to affect everything down your lumbar spine. So that's, yep. I mean, I, I could really feel, I mean, it's in fact my entire life. This is one of the first times I've heard this. It is the first time I've heard this, uh, that scooping action, but I can feel my Latin serratus so much. I mean, much more yeah. that way. Incredible. I think I think bodybuilders they tend to do it in shows. They'll kind of do this this extreme flare so much that their arms are lifted up. The goal here is to get a get nice subtle contraction so that your arms can actually stay by your side still. So I'm actually mm. I'm doing the, the similar motion, but I'm making sure the blades are down. I'm I'm trying to scoop those blades around the rib cage to help engage the serratus and create a lot of stability in the shoulder. And when you do that, wow. people that have shoulder impingement it pulls the acromion away from mm. that supraspinatus or that bicep tendon. So when people lift the shoulder, the, the arm up, it can actually slide through that groove. That's yeah, great. rather than the doctors with an impingement, because right now the typical surgery, the most common shoulder diagnosis is impingement. And what that is is where your supraspinatus tendon, it gets trapped under your acromion. And so because healthcare is very symptom-based, what they do is they go, well, we're just going to cut a chunk off of your acromion to allow your shoulder to elevate. Meanwhile, you can simply not, it's not simple. It's a challenge. The shoulder scoop, I'm going to make this clear, is one of the most challenging movements to learn. It's like if you're walking up steps, you've got to skip a step on this one. This is like a yeah. big step. But it's 100% necessary to regain the control and confidence in your shoulder without resorting to drugs or surgery or having to go to a chiro over and over and over and over again. So it is, it increases the distance from the top of the bone of the arm to the acromion, which is equivalent to cutting a chunk out of the bone, but you're doing it with your own muscles rather than with, with an exacto blade and a sawzall. So it's a, it, for everyone out there, it is a beautiful movement. It's challenging. It takes steps. You may not feel it right now, but it's something just to work on. It's one. It's something myself personally. Before every workout, I'm always scooping my scapula, and I'm doing it throughout the day. It's because because it feels so good. Yeah. It feels so just like it feels great. So good to eat well. Once you start eating well and giving your body the nutrients, you I'm always going to do this because I now know how mm. good I feel. It's the same with this movement. Yep. Yeah, it's great. It'll make your back very jacked, just doing that one movement. Whether you're pushing, pulling, pressing, whatever it is, your back is going to get activated in everything that you do. So, and in doing this, it's really just, it's a movement. You're not doing weight with it or you're, you're doing movement and eventually you're doing weight with it. Walk me exactly. through, is there a progression there? 
So the, what I just showed you is, is a little bit of it. There's other things that we can work on to get your brain to connect with it. Cause a lot of times people just cannot connect their mind to what's going on there. So mm. there's a few steps there, but then yes, we start to add some resistance to that motion, start to apply it to pulling and pushing movements. Um, all, all, you know, standing using banded resistance and stuff like that. And, and, and then so, they start to progress the bigger and, and so, movement. And so you're believing when you're doing a row, when you're doing a press that, that should be happening that scooping every time every time, yeah. every time. wow everywhere. every time and it's I mean, that, that, that's a game changer because nobody's doing that everywhere it's full <laughs> body awareness like if we're doing a row that's every single rep there's a scoop and there's a pull but that scoop the brain stays maintains conscious contact with that position throughout the movement because mm. it feels so good and therefore it, that's not just the only part the ribs are down and it becomes, it becomes, and right now what happens, people are listening to music, they're listening to podcasts when they work out, which is, okay, we get it. Sometimes it's, it's too loud. You just shut that noise off so you can feel and listen to your body. Mm -hmm. And those six checkpoints, when you row, you're driving from your feet and it becomes a game to connect with all six of them. And my buddy, he, uh, going through some challenges, uh, Antonio Brown, he is, one thing he's always said is, is we teach him six, six checkpoints. And when he's in the line of scrimmage, he goes, he zips them up zips them and it's like and that connection right there is what is that is awareness and that is positioning and positioning yourself for success and the results are just so they're, they're predictable regardless of the diagnosis regardless of the condition this just works this is a law of nature it's the way your body was designed to move from the factory no it's good it's fantastic yeah so just as a reminder for people as we're talking about can, can you guys go through those six checkpoints again yeah and before we do that actually and you asked about progressions of the scoop and yeah. andrew can you do doorway as well because the doorway is the easiest way and i think i think what the progression you at that'll help people at home the most is is to hang on to a doorway and i can always grab one right here myself here we can see andrew here here we go so grabbing onto a doorway and then letting your body lean away from it so you have your your body weight just pulling against the arm kind of helps to, to traction out the shoulder a little bit or distract whatever you want to call it Pull, pulling away from away from the shoulder i'm actually lifting up my left foot slightly so that a lot of my weight is in the arm and from there it makes it much easier to get control of that shoulder position rolling that shoulder forward and then down and scooping it forward toward the toward the door in this instance so just just having that weight that's good yep, and turn a phone on put your phone on put your phone on guys girls take your shirt off record your own back and, and that way you can watch because one challenge with the shoulder blade is you can't see it. It's hard to see it with a mirror. You can't see it. It's not like a bicep curl. It's not like you're contracting your abs. And so because you can't see it, you got technology in your hand. Everyone here has got a phone. So record yourself doing it and watch is going to be a huge breakthrough. Just like people in our program, we have them in the move you method, they record themselves and then they go, whoa, I never knew that. They make breakthroughs just by watching themselves. So record yourself doing this in a doorway. That's the easiest way that we've found that helps people connect with this movement. We got a lot of people listening here who have these issues and, and they're probably saying to themselves, okay, I can do a few of these things. Sure. But if somebody wants to be walked through some of this, do you guys have a resource of, hey, we sell this product or hey, go to our, you know, follow us on social, what, what do you recommend people do if somebody's saying, okay, I've got a, I've, I've, I've had this chronic issue. I want to heal from it. I'm willing to yeah. invest. What, 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 what do you, what, what do you guys have? Yep. The people who have been, who are limited, they're either limited by body pain. They, they're frustrated with the healthcare system. They are, they're frustrated with their, their, their balance of their body. They feel imbalanced. Maybe they're a trainer looking to improve for those people. The move you method is right for them. That's an online training system. So you can go to moveu.com and moveu.com and you can enroll in the move you method. It's an online program with the community. It's a step-by-step -step sequential guide. There's over 180 Love sequential it. training videos attached with the community. We have full-time coaches that are dedicated, they're passionate, that are in the community helping people improve and succeed. Wow. The product works every single time. You have to want it. You have to be ready to do it, period. You don't go in there going, well, you know, see how, you, no, you, I want to improve. I'm going to do it for those people. You will 100% get the results you want. Wow. Now for those people that go, well, I don't know if I just want something with my, maybe just my shoulder in the six checkpoints that you asked about the most simple place to start 
the truth is we don't know if your back pain is because of your shoulder blade positioning or your foot or your foot class. We don't know. But the most simple place to start for those other, for those of you guys who want to try to find some small improvements is to go to our Instagram page. That's M-O-V-E-U. And the six checkpoints are your foot. Number one, your foot. Your ability to grip the ground with your foot, to, to balance your foot like a car tire on the ground. So for anybody having foot pain, Achilles tendonitis, uh, plantar fasciitis, any kind of neuromas in the foot, for those of you, you can start with your foot. So anything related on Instagram page, we also have YouTube playlists, and we're soon to have an app. So look for that in November. Those are for the simple. That's if you want to improve your foot, then you go to that. And the next, the next checkpoint is your knee, your ability to position your knee properly. Most people collapse their knee inward. So anything meniscus, ACL, MCL, PCL, anything on our page. IT band. Your, hmm. IT band, yeah. your tra tracking of your knee, your foot, knee, and hip. They need to work together as one. They need to be aligned as much as possible. And when they're not aligned, you need to be aware. So anything with knee pain, resort to turn to any knee exercises. Then the hips, your hips, your pelvic tilt, like we went over. And also there's a lateral tilt component side to side, which often comes, we go, I have a short leg. Oftentimes a short leg is an imbalance of musculature. It's not even a real yeah. short leg. Yeah. If people have natural imba imbalances in their body, structural, actual structural imbalances in the body, those people 100% need to learn their bodies. Are they ever gonna be straight? No, but come on, we're dealt, a de we're dealt a couple cards, it's poker. For you, you're dealt whatever it is, eight, nine. The hand you're dealt, when you learn to play that hand that you're dealt with and you learn it, you will succeed. Yep. And so it does it just regardless of what condition you have or diagnosis, it doesn't matter. And then we get into the core position. Those of you who have back pain, um, any type of uh, pressure problems, hernias, herniations, prolapses. These are all pressure related issues. Look to the core, look to your breathing. That's checkpoint number one, two, three, four. Shoulder pain, neck pain, pec, arm numbness, turn to your shoulder blade. That's checkpoint number five. Turn to your blade, turn to the scoop for that first. Neck pain, up top, headaches, Turn to your head position, learning how to set your head. Turn there first. I cannot guarantee that that is going to solve your problem. You likely will make improvements. And then you start, then start moving from that to the next area. So if it's foot, go to foot, then go to the knee. Then after that, go to the hip. But to truly, to truly achieve your possibility, you must learn the body and stay connected with all six of those checkpoints all the time. That's the level to strive towards. I'm not saying you're going to ever get there, but strive towards that always until you die. And you will find results. You will find success in your body. You'll gain the confidence and understand that your life is, is a choice. It's you, if you, those diagnoses, they're not you. They're man-made. There's people that have less limbs than you, that have had a harder life than you, that have overcome all that and are living their dream. It's possible mm -hmm. for everybody. We're all built for success, period. So don't let any of these excuses hold you back from improving. My arthritis, my disc pain, my kids, you are built for success. You're built to improve. You can do it. It's not magic. It doesn't take an Olympian to do it. It doesn't take it. It just takes a little bit every single day, a little bit of time, gaining awareness, learning from your mistakes, steady improvement over the course of time equals results every single time. So it's you're capable of it. You can do it. We believe in you. Yeah, and I want to share. I, I want. I want. I want yeah, that was great. I want to share too that uh, I know this stuff works. I know because again, my 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 wife practices a lot of this. She used to train people and go through this. I know that I followed you guys for a while. I know that I've had injuries over the years. I've I had an impinged shoulder with an AC joint issue, and it was again, it was scapula. You know, and I started doing exercise. Same thing, low back. It was completely pelvis issues. And so, if you're struggling with any type of joint discomfort, chronic pain anywhere, you, you got to check this out. I want to encourage you guys, go to, is it moveyou.com or what's the website? It is, it's moveyou.com. So move you, it's M-O-V-E-U.com, the letter U. And then uh, go to move, letter U, move you uh, on Instagram and also on Facebook. I want to, I want to encourage you guys to check those right. out. And listen, there's no reason you have to keep dealing with pain. The problem is just like what happens so frequently, 
people are recommending things to treat your symptom, but they're not getting the root cause. That's what I love here about Dr. Mike and Andrew, what they're doing is they're helping you address the root cause of your problem yes. so you can heal for good. You can feel great. You can be 80 years old running around with your grandkids. That's what we yes. need to do. And so and the earlier, the better. The earlier yes. you can fix these things, yes. the absolute better. So I want to encourage you guys, and especially practitioners. I know we got a lot of medical doctors, a lot of chiropractors, a lot of people in the fitness industry that listen to the podcast here, especially for you. You have a responsibility to teach your patients and the people you care for how to do things the right way. And I want to say thanks, guys. This is a fun interview. I love you guys. You guys are, uh, you guys are fun. And I want to say, too, I love on your guys' Instagram how you guys paint on the muscles, make it oh, so yeah. easy to see. You guys, were, uh, you guys are very gifted in teaching. You guys are amazing teachers. And I think as everybody jumps on your Instagram page and starts to follow you and see, see what you do, you'll, you'll see that uh, you guys make it simple as well. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Well, so I want to say, uh, man, thanks so much for uh, being on the podcast today. Oh, appreciate man. you having us. Dr. Josh, thank you so much. That was awesome. That was, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And everyone out there on also the motivation. One last area is our podcast as well. And we have oh, yeah. in there, that's for motivation as well. Motive, because we, the truth is, if it was easy as doing exercise reps, everyone would do it. People go, I don't find the time or I'm not motivated. They lose it. We have a podcast. We interview different movers, movers who found success. We have different topics about common myths of medical and healthcare. And these are all designed to help people stay motivated through the process of learning. Because when mm -hmm. you have that skill, when you develop the skill, you have it for life. It doesn't mean you have to be continue grinding away, doing the same mobility stretches forever. When you learn the skill, you have it for life. And, and we want all of you to have that skill because it is a superpower that you can have. And you can do as well. We have people as early as 16 doing it, as old as 80 years old. So you can do it. Do it. All right. Wanna, hey, thanks everybody for listening. I want to say thank you again to Andrew and Dr. Mike here from Move You. And uh, hey, next time I'm out in California or if I'm in San Diego, would love to meet up. We can uh, do some videos and chat a bit. Yeah, that'd be oh, awesome. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, yeah. Great. All right. All right Thanks, Dr. guys. Josh. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate Bye. it, Dr. Right. Talk to you later. Bye. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. 